so thank you for the possibility given to talk about uh, how to deal with uh, high pressure and ultra high pressure uh, flooding clients and uh, what what this can mean for uh, ultra high pressure uh, fluid studies. So in uh, deep subductions, uh, uh, solute bearing fluids are realized into the overlying mantle wedge. And this will uh, cause mantle metasomatis and then the associated arc magnetism. For this reason, the characterization of uh, these deep fluids uh, is the stepping stone to understand long-term chemical cycles. Subduction fluids can be re uh, evaluated by being of indirect and direct approaches. And with indirect, uh, we mean uh, experimental petrology and thermodynamic, thermodynamic uh, modeling, with the latter being uh, represented by a rec the recent introduction of thermodynamic modeling of electrolytic fluids, which allow to predict uh, the complex chemistry of uh, solute bearing deep fluids. With uh, direct uh, approach, we mean uh, the study for fluid inclusions uh, in uh, exhumated high pressure and ultra high pressure rocks. However, uh, these uh, inclusions are generally uh, modified by post entropic modification during their exhumation to the surface. So the open problems with uh, ultra high pressure uh, fluid studies regard the current interpretation of the mineral phases included in the fluid inclusions because this directly is directly linked to the to the chemical rep representativity of this fluid inclusion of the original the trapped fluid, and the reliability of this novel technique in thermodynamic modeling in predicting the complex chemistry of solute bearing uh, fluids. So to test uh, these problems, we selected uh, as a case study a marble lens in the ultra pressure unit of the Dromaira Massif in the Western Alps, in the Western Alps which experienced multiple uh, prograde to pick uh, the solution or precipitation events until it reached its uh, metamorphic peak at 4.3 GPA and 730 degrees Celsius. The selected sample is intentionally uh, chemically simple in pure dolomitic uh, calcific marble, where primary fluid inclusions are preserved only in the progress to peak uh, dioxide. In this uh, dioxide, in generally there are four types uh, of uh, fluid inclusions, but only type one are primary and are also microstructurally uh, correlated to these uh, uh, carbonate inclusions with some graphite flocculs. Type one fluid inclusions based are three phase multi-solid fluid inclusions and based on their habit, on the ratio between liquid vapor and the solid phases, and on the kind of solid phases, can be further subdivided in four uh, subtypes. From type 1A to type 1D, the habit is progress progressively changing from a nice negative crystal shape to irregular with uh, uh, shots. Moreover, type 1A contains a single big crystal white while type 1b to 1d the number of solids and the occupied volume by them progressively increases the phases included in these uh, fluid inclusions have been characterized by raman microspectroscopy notably uh, type 1a fluid inclusions contain a single big crystal of calcite type 1b contains small calcite crystals and talc, and type 1C and D contain calcite, talc, serpentine minerals, dolomite, sulfites, and only in type 1D, even graphite. In all type 1 uh, fluid inclusions, the fluid phase, phases are constituted by liquid water and, when present, by uh, a vapor bubble composed by vapor water, nitrogen, and methane. Combining the uh, Raman microanalysis uh, data with the uh, data derived from image analysis of fluid inclusions, we were able to assess the bulk composition of 23 fluid inclusions, which is shown, as shown uh, here below, 
quite a wide range in uh, the chemical uh, variability of the abundance of the fluid components. Thus, now we need to recognize if the included solid phases are either daughter, stepdaughter, or incidentally trapped minerals, which uh, directly determine the chemical representativity of this study in Glasgow. And so, to determine uh, which solids are, product, uh, are produced by post entrapment modification, we modeled the post entrapment reaction between the host dioxide and the included fluid by means of a petrogenetic grid in a simplified CMS H2O CO2 system. Among all the other, uh, mole, uh, among all the modeled reactions, we searched for those reactions with the host dioxide, the included fluid, and some other minerals as the reactant. And as the product of the reaction, all the minerals now included in the, uh, in the fluid inclusions. Moreover, this uh, reaction, reaction should progress from the high temperature to toward the lower temperature because they should be active during the exhumation stages of the rock. And finally, uh, these other minerals are qualitatively uh, used as representative of the dissolved cations in the original solute-rich fluid. Overall, from all the model reaction, we can extract this uh, violet marked uh, univariant equilibria which can more or less explain all the uh, observed mineral association within type 1 fluid clusions, except for the big, single big crystal in type 1A fluid clusions, since no single reaction is capable to, to produce only calcite. This means that the big calcite crystals that we observe in type 1 fluid clusions have to be incidentally trapped. And this means that type 1 fluid inclusions are not representative of the originally trapped fluid. However, all the other uh, type 1 uh, fluid inclusions are reproduced by these reactions. So all the included mineral phases in those inclusions can be regarded as stepdaughter minerals, which means derived from the interaction, chemical interaction between the fluid and the host minerals. However, we still need to assess whether the measure of the fluid composition of the of these fluid inclusions is chemically representative of the original trapped fluid. For this reason, uh, we integrated the, the constraint that we can derive from fluid inclusions, like uh, the graphite in carbonate inclusion, the presence of sulfide, and the presence of methane, to reconstruct uh, uh, the system by composition, and most importantly, is a redox, to model by means of a pseudo section the peak, uh, the composition of the peak fluid. And thanks to the lag speciation algorithm now implemented in Perplex, we were able to obtain an aqueous uh, solid bearing fluid that was characterized at the peak by 96.3 mol percent of water. 0.09 mole percent of volatile uh, species like CO2, methane, and H2S, and by 3.7 mole percent, which equates to 11.3 weight percent of the solvent load, which is composed by all the cations and anions that constitute the chemical system. So, not only hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and so forth. Bearing the moderate fluid composition with the measured one, we can already see that type 1B fluid inclusions are the least modified because are the closest to the moderate fluid. And their discrepancy from the moderate fluid uh, is mostly due to water loss, most probably by diffusion. And probably only one of the two inclusion have experienced, have experienced some minor chemical interaction with the host dioxide. Thus, we cannot rule out the possibility that the token calcite included in a type 1b fluid inclusions are actually true daughter minerals. However, 
type 1c and 1d fluid inclusions show extreme interaction with the uh, host dioxide and an even more extreme water loss, most probably by the crepitation this time. And to express more quantitatively this post-entropic modification, we can say that by calculating the barycentric uh, coordinates in this type of plot of the, each fluid inclusion, we can say that the fluid inclusion 1b have experienced between 2 and 8 mol percent of diopsidic contamination and only between 16 mol percent of water loss. Why type 1c have experienced between 0 and 36 mol percent of diopsidic contamination and between 38 and 75 mol percent of water loss. And finally, type 1d have experienced between 2 and 29 mol, mol percent of diopsidic contamination and between 55 and 89 mol percent of water loss. So, based on the, on the presented uh, analysis, we can say that firstly, thermodynamic modeling of electrolytic fluids uh, allows to identify cryptic, which means water diffusion, and the non cryptic, cryptic which means uh, fluid host interaction and uh, fluid decrepitation, post entropic modification, and to ascertain that all the ultra pressure fluid inclusions are variably modified. However, there is the possibility that all some cases will be poorly modified, but still the majority of the fluid inclusions are expected to be strongly modified. Secondly, it's also possible to recognize that even between the most modified uh, ultra pressure uh, fluid inclusions, some that have experienced only water loss, so those, so this inclusion here, will be able to preserve their original cationic content and ratio, meaning that they are still chemically representative of the original trapped fluid. And so even this inclusion here that are miles away from the model fluid can be chemically representative and be used for further chemical analysis. And thirdly, electrolytic thermodynamic modeling at high pressure and ultra high pressure conditions is actually capable to reproduce naturally constrained fluid composition by accounting uh, uh, for an increase of the salt to load compared to classical molecular models. And concluding, the results have been made possible only by integrating in the thermodynamic problem the preserved constraint within ultra pressure condition like graphite in carbonate inclusions and sulfide and methane in the fluid inclusions, which helped to constrain the correct bulk composition of the system and most importantly its redox thus enabling uh, to reach a more complete characterization of the processes that affected the study of rock. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Um, I think we don't really have time for any questions. Um, so um, we'll just jump right to the next talk.